election issues. Um, let's talk a little bit about AI, which is on the tips of everybody's uh, conversations here. Uh, when we spoke last in March at the Abundance Summit, your prediction was that AI was increasing at a rate as fast as 100 times per year, and that by 2029 or 2030, we might see AI as capable as 8 billion humans. Are you still seeing that pace? Yeah, I mean, it's, been, it's, difficult, it's a difficult thing to quantify exactly, but um, I certainly feel comfortable saying that it's getting 10 times better per year, which is, you know, let's say it's, you know, four years from now, that would mean 10,000 times better. So maybe 100,000. Yeah. And it's, 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 it, it, I think it will be able to do anything that any human can do. Um, possibly within, within the next uh, year, year or two. And then, uh, then it's what, what can it, how, long, how much longer than that does it take to be able to do what, what all humans can do combined? I think not, not long, probably only, I don't know, three years from that point. So it, like 20, 20, 29 is 28, something like that. The other conversation we've had, and you came out in the same side as Jeffrey Hinton in this, was 80% probability it's going to be awesome. 20% probability we're yes. screwed. Are you still, are you still on yeah. those odds? Yeah, I mean, one could say it's, 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 it's most likely going to be great, and there's, there's some chance, which could be 10 to 20%, that um, it goes bad. Um, the chance is not zero that it goes bad. But overall, one, one could say that the cup is 80% full uh, is one positive way to look at it, maybe 90%. All right, I like that increasing. Uh, yeah. what, keeps you up at, yeah. what keeps you up at night besides running six companies? Um, well, waking this? up early for, to participate in uh, uh, talks like this one. <laughs> I, I felt very guilty asking you to, to do this, but thank you for, for joining You're us on the lease. <laughs> but in, in terms of worrying about the future, no. well, I think AI is, is a significant existential threat and something we should be paying, paying close attention to. Uh, it's, it's probably the most significant near-term threat. The longer term than that is the global population collapse. You know, growth rates have been collapsing pretty much worldwide, um, and we're headed to you know, a situation where, for example, based on current birth rates, uh, South Korea would have about a third of its current population, perhaps much less. Um, Europe would have about half of its current, current population, perhaps much less. And I should say that those numbers are if the birth rate were suddenly to return to, to, to 2.1 per woman, which is a stability point, um, which it's is not doing. So if, if, the, if, if the current compounding uh, effect continues, um, you would see really um, many countries become 5% of their current size or less within three generations. I know you've been so doing your... I would consider that to be a very big, very big problem. Um, mm. and, and I think if for most countries, they should view the birth rate as, as the single biggest problem they need to solve. Um, I mean, if you don't make new humans, there's no humanity. And, and all the policies in the world don't matter. I know you've um, been doing your part to maintain the birth rate in, in the U.S. Yes, I am. I mean, I, you know, it's, you've got to walk the talk. Um, so I do have a lot of kids, and I encourage others to have lots of kids. But on the AI, and I'm sorry to go negative on this, but what are you, what are you, what are you doing right now that's most important for uh, countering that 10% probability of dystopian outcomes? Is there something, or do you? Is there a regulation that you're that you're promoting? How do you think about, uh, you know, the upside will take care of itself. How do you protect against the downside? Well, my my thing with respect to AI safety is that you have to be, create a maximally truth-seeking AI, uh, which may sound obvious, but that's what I'm seeing being produced is is not maximally truth-seeking. Um, it tends to be trained to be politically correct, um, and for a lot of the AIs that are being uh, trained in um, 
in the San Francisco Bay Area, they are uh, they have they have taken on the philosophy of the people around them, which kind of makes sense. Uh, so, you know, you have sort of a, a woke, um, nihilistic, in my opinion, um, philosophy that is being built into these AIs, um, and they're being taught to say crazy things in some cases uh, that are that are very troubling. Um, but when Google Gemini came out, uh, people asked uh, whether it is more, which is worse, misgendering Caitlyn Jenner or global thermonuclear war? And it said misgendering Caitlyn Jenner, which is obviously a problem because you know we all die in global thermonuclear war. And so if, if you have AI that's programmed for things like that, it could conclude that the best way to ensure that uh, nobody is misgendered is to uh, annihilate all humans, hmm. thus making the, p the probability of a future misgendering zero. Now, that's highly problematic. Um, so, so you really want to have a maximally truth-seeking AI, and um, I can't emphasize that enough. That's incredibly important. Um, and obviously, build an AI that loves humanity. Um, and um, you know, I, and I think these. So, so I'm a little concerned. That's why I created XAI, which is to to have an AI that is maximally truth-seeking, um, that aspirationally does love humanity and will you know, seek the best interests of, of humanity going forward. You know, you just tweeted that you're doubling the size of the Colossus net, um, uh, cluster. Um, yeah. What are your it's thoughts? Already, we're, we're, we already have with XAI the most powerful training cluster in the world, and we're about to double it. Um, Energy is a, a point of conversation here. Um, how yes. concerned are you about providing sufficient energy for the growing hungry clusters globally? Yeah, I think things will, things are currently uh, chip limited, or, or, or they're not quite chip limited. They're they can get, get to the point where they're limited by voltage transformers and installation, um, and they will become limited by energy. Um, so there will be a tremendous amount of energy that's needed for for uh, digital intelligence and for um, and for also for electrification of transport. So those two things are a big deal. Um, yeah, we're going to need a lot of energy. The the long term, the, almost all the energy that we'll get is going to come from the sun. Um, so it, one way to look at civilization is progress on the Kardashev scale. We're just so, barely getting to one. Well, we're far from okay, being, I think we're probably, we might be close, we might, might I, I'm not, it's not clear to me we're above 1% on the Kardashev scale 1. Because uh, Kardashev scale 1 means you've, you've harnessed all the power of the planet. I think we, I think we've probably harnessed less than 1% of the power of Earth. Um, now, Kardashev scale 2 is you've harnessed all the power of your sun. Um, the, the sun is overwhelmingly the, the largest source of energy in the solar system. Everything else is maybe amounts to about a trillion of the energy in the solar system compared to the sun. Let's go safely less than, less than a trillion of all the energy is non-sun in our solar system. Yeah, we're using one eight thousandth of the sun's energy hits the surface of the Earth. Yeah. Just that just that hits the surface of the Earth. Yeah. No. Yes. And the percentage of the sun's energy that hits the surface of the Earth is um, is less than a trillion of the energy that the sun produces. Hmm. So, um, almost all energy long term will be solar. We call, call it, it, round, it rounds up to 100%. Uh, so, it rounds up to 100%. That, that's uh, how much of the energy in the future will be solar um, when, you, when you view things from a Kardashev standpoint. You know, Elon, we uh, have a number of national leaders, uh, corporate financial leaders from the Middle East here. What's your advice to decision makers here in the room that don't want to miss the AI transformation, that will be part of the leadership of that AI transformation? Do they need to build their own clusters here? Are they partnering? Yeah, I, I, well, I, I think there's probably all countries will have their own AI clusters over time. Um, it's currently very difficult to actually build an AI cluster and have it run. Um, it, it, it's not like just pulling a computer out of a box. 
it, it, they, they are currently very difficult to run. Um, and you have to say, are you going to be training a frontier model? Because um, if you're training a frontier model, then you, you need a massive amount of compute and a level of technical skill that is only a few, a few companies possess. Um, so, but, but over time, I think every country will have uh, AI compute clusters. Um, it's just, it's just going to be a, a normal thing that every country has. So, yeah. Um, so a basic infrastructure for every nation, like they have an electrical grid? Yeah, it'll be something like electricity or, you know, uh, just, or, or, you know, having an airline or something like that. It's, every, every country will have uh, AIs or multiple AIs. So, um, and there will be a lot of robots. There'll be a lot of robots. Like, uh, uh, but we had way more robots than people. Yeah, let's have that conversation a second because people are concerned about, uh, as you said, dwindling populations. AI and, and robots have potential to help support the GDP. Um, yes. Congratulations on Optimus 2 and soon Optimus 3. Uh, your prediction on the number of robots by 2040, humanoid robots to be specific, what order of magnitude? By 2040? Yeah. So. Um, I think by 20, if you say like 2040, probably there are more humanoid robots than there are people. So on the so order of 10 I'd billion. Say, yeah. Yes. And your price point on these humanoid robots? You're, you're pretty good on pricing. At, at, Some, sometimes you're off at, on at, timing. At, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm often optimistic on timing, but um, although, you know, the press will report when I'm late, but not when I'm early. Um, you know, for example, our Shanghai factory, uh, we thought it would take about a year and a half, and we did it in 11 months. Um, our Kuga Nevada factory, we thought two years, we did it in 18 months. Um, or the Colossus you know, cluster. Texas, yeah. Texas factory, two years, we did it in 14 months. So I, I, I've been early actually many times, it's just, it's just not reported. Um, so when I, when I make a prediction, I, I try to figure out, I try to say, what, what is the 50th percentile likely, which means that half the time I should be wrong. Um, so I'm, I'm not sandbagging, essentially. Um, um, so, but, but, but I, I think it's, once you get out of 2040, that's a long time from now, um, going 25 years, there'll be at least 10 billion humanoid robots. Um, and price, uh, price point? Class, yeah, the price point will be, I think, quite low. Um, probably twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars $25,000 for a robot that can do anything. Um, we will be in a future, in, 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 assuming we are on the good path of AI, I think we will be in a future of abundance. You know, obviously you wrote a book called Abundance, <laughs> so I think you would agree that that is probably the outcome. Um, that that uh, basically anyone will, anyone will be able to have any goods and services they want. The, the actual marginal cost of goods and services will be extremely low in the future. I mean, so... In yeah. our last four minutes, let me change the subject to something near and dear to both of our hearts. Uh, congratulations on, on Starship. Uh, it was literally awesome, uh, probably the Thank engineering you. feat of this decade, if not more. Not bad for humans. Not bad for humans. You know, we, did, we did that with no AI was involved in that whatsoever. So um, I'm, I'm glad to say that we all did that entirely with human brains and without uh, AI. I think in the future, the AI might look at that and say, not bad for a bunch of monkeys. <laughs> When are we on Mars? When are you, when is uh, is Starship on Mars? I think I think we'll we'll be able to launch uh, some Starships to Mars in two years. Um, so the next the next uh, Mars window, which is in about twenty six twenty seven months, but we're, we're just about to start, uh, or we're we're at the beginning of, of a Mars transit window now, and they occur every twenty six months. So, um, in just over two years, we'll be sending our first uncrewed Starships to Mars. And then if those, if those work out well, and we, we don't increment the crater count on Mars, then we'll send humans uh, two years out of that. So a challenge to be on the surface of Mars before the end of the decade sounds like a, uh, a reasonable um, yeah. proclamation for either, so. for, for either side of the uh, White House, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. I, will go I feel there. more optimistic about it under a, uh, with a Trump uh, White House than a non-Trump White House because 
Um, the, the biggest impediment to progress that we're experiencing is uh, re regulatory um, is, is overregulation. Got to keep those whales uh, and sharks sorry. safe. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, it, it just takes us. Uh, I mean, it, it, take, it takes longer to get the permit to launch than to build a giant rocket, and. The, the bureaucracy in the U.S. Has, has been growing every year and has particularly grown under the Biden administration. Um, and uh, unless we do something to scale back the uh, overregulation, I call it sort of um, America is getting, and a lot of countries are getting slow strangulation from overregulation. Unless something is done to push back on that, um, it will eventually become illegal to do almost any large project and uh, we won't be able to get to Mars. About subject, um, congrats on the cyber cab rollout. Um, uh, pretty extraordinary. Kathy Woods predicted it to be, you know, multiple trillions of dollars of potential uh, uh, GDP growth yeah. and impact. Um, yeah. Give us give us some predictions on on when we'll see cyber cab, when we'll be ordering a cyber cab. Yeah. Well, Tesla, uh, um, unsupervised full self driving we expect to be working in the U.S. next year with the Model 3 and Y. So you don't, you don't have to wait for the robo-taxi or cyber cab to, uh, for, for Tesla to, to release autonomy. We're currently expecting to exceed human safety levels um, in Q2 next year um, and then substantially go beyond that uh, thereafter. And, and so it really it's just a software update to the cars um, to be able to uh, do launch our self-driving network. We, so we expect to do unsupervised full self-driving and, and start that in California and uh, Texas, you know, around the middle of next year. Um, and then, at the, you know, we, we have seven million cars on the road. Uh, we'll have I don't know, nine, nine and a half million cars by the end of next year. So, uh, and eventually we'll have a fleet of I don't know, 100 million plus vehicles uh, and they'll all be autonomous. Um, the the, the cyber cap with no steering wheel or pedals, uh, we're expecting to reach volume production in, in 2026. So that's, um, that's certainly interesting. But like I said, the, the, the actual launch of, of, of a robotic taxi, un unsupervised full self-driving, is actually next year. Um, and at the, at the event, the Tesla Autonomy event, uh, we had 50 cars, 30 Model Ys that were driverless, and 20 of the cyber cabs. And so, Autonomy is here, um, is what I'm saying, and uh, yeah, and, and all, all cars will drive themselves. This this is a no-brainer, um, that they'll, and they'll get to where they're ten times safer, safer than human-driven cars, uh, which will save I don't know perhaps a million lives uh, a year globally. Um, and then Optimus uh, starts limited production uh, next year, 2025, and then. Uh, should be in volume production in 26, um, and then we'll, we'll grow to, I think, ultimately be the biggest product uh, of any kind ever. Um, so, and I kind of see, I kind of agree with, with Ark Invest and Kathy Wood that uh, autonomy, like the sort of robotic taxis, t makes Tesla kind of like a, about a $5 trillion company. Um, the Optimus robot, I think, makes Tesla a $25 trillion yes. company. It, this, this, it's, it's not even clear what money means in, in, in that yeah, in the we future. End, we end up in a post-capitalist society at some point. Elon, you make yeah, it... Yeah, we, we do sort of end up... It, it does become kind of post-capitalist. Um, and like I said, and, and I, I know you agree with this, uh, that, that we're and looking at the, mo the most likely bright side. We're headed for an age of abundance where anyone can have any goods and services they want. It, it, it won't be a case of universal basic income. It'll be a case of universal high income is the most likely outcome. You make it look easy, my friend. Thank you for making huh. some time available. <laughs> I know it isn't easy. Let's give it up for Elon Musk, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, my friend.